Okay, we're going to start with Isaiah. Remember, I'm just going to read a verse. I'm going to teach on that verse. I might do a little, say a little something about it. But let's just read the verse and see what it says. Isaiah 43, 7. Even, one, it, even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. If you're a, a, a Christian... God is saying right here, He has made you. You. He's talking especially to you, James. Especially to you. He's talking especially to you and saying, Hey, I made you for my glory. Amen. I mean, when God says that to you, when, he, when, he, when you, I mean, He's saying it to every one of us. Yeah. He's telling us right now, every one of us in this room, God is saying, Hey, I made you for my glory. Amen. Huh? <laughs> do, you, do you feel like God made you for, for His glory? Or do you have it? Or do you walk at the feet of walk with the Lord? Mm-hmm. If you're walking in the feet, you're not going to feel like any kind of glory. Mm-hmm. But if you're walking in the light, He made you for His glory. Mm-hmm. Us, we know us. I know me, and God told me, I made you for my glory. <laughs> Does He love us or what? Because yeah. every one of us know self. Who we are? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> come on. God said, I made you for my glory. Amen. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. We found his words. People are hungry. Christians who are hungry, we have his words. Mm-hmm. Or, and right here it says, and I did eat them. Christians aren't hungry. Christians don't eat. A lot of them. Some of them. But there's a lot who don't. Yeah. Most Christians are not hungry. The Lord says right here, Thy words were found, and I. Well, this, is what, this is what we need to tell God. I found your words. I found you, and I found your scriptures. I found your words, and boy, I was hungry for them. I was hungry for him because I knew that I know the life I was living, and now because of you and your words, I am a, I am living a new, a more happier living life. Amen. You thought you was living before. No, you don't start living until God gives you life, Amen. and only He can give it to you. Amen? Amen. So when we find His words, we need to eat them, and when we eat them, what happens? We'll have a joy and rejoicing in our heart. When you eat the words of God, when you study and hunger for the word of God, it tells you right here, you will have a joy and rejoicing in your heart. How many of us want joy and rejoicing in our lives? Mm-hmm. All of us. So what do we have to do to get it? Study the word of God. Eat his words. Feed on his words. Amen. Mm-hmm. John eleven verse twenty six. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? God is saying, You believe in me, you will never die. <laughs> I mean, these verses I'm going to be reading to y'all, it's like, I don't Sometimes we just read them. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Yeah. Believest thou this? But, I mean, read it. You've got to read it. Whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Shall never die. Uh, I think this is what you call the fountain of youth. (laughs) Right? I mean, the world out there, the world out there, they're looking for the fountain of youth where they'll never die. Do we have it? Yes. We have it. Amen? Amen? God has given us our fountain of youth. Youth. He says we will never die. And then he says, because he knew there's going to be some of y'all. That was going to go, hmm. And that's why he says, do you believe this? Because if you do believe it, then act like it. And how do we act like it? With a joy and rejoicing in our heart. When we believe verses like this, we will be joyful. Full of happiness. If you, Like I said, if these verses do not touch you, you better check yourself out. Because you might not have the Holy Spirit. You might be just going through the emotions. Because right. if it's hitting you here, that's why you're not getting anything. If it's hitting you in your brain, 
You need to let it hit you in the heart where God lives. Right. Amen? Amen? Then you can receive these and be joyful. Acts 2.28 Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance, meaning His presence. With His presence, we will be full of joy. Mm-hmm. If you're walking in the Spirit, and what's walking in the Spirit? Being filled with the Holy Spirit that we talked about, the power of. When you're, doing, when you're that way, then you know the ways of life. True life. You know, the people out there, the lost people, they think they know true life. They don't know it. Not the true life. We got the true life. It's in his, and it's in Jesus. Amen. It shall make me full of joy. You know, so tonight... Well, people want to know that. <laughs> tonight, we're going to read all these scriptures. And next Tuesday when I see y'all, if you don't come, we're going to see if you're still full of joy or not. Because <laughs> uh-huh. when you're out there in the world... It can bring you down. Oh yeah. It can bring you down. But hey, we're going to read scriptures tonight. We're not going to let that happen. Amen. All right? Romans eight thirty seven. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors, conquerors through Him that loved us. Through all these things, through this life, He has made us what? Conquerors. Amen. 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 <laughs> I mean, really, come on. There's nothing out there that's going to defeat me. Because the Lord has made me this way. He has made us victorious. Mm -hmm. Amen? Victorious. We're talking day by day after every day. Not just sometimes. This is all the time. We could live this way all the time. If we put our eyes on the Lord, on His words. If we take the... (sighs) You believe God saved you. Saved you from hell. You believe that. Right. So if you can believe Him in saving your life, why can't we believe the rest of this? Yeah. I mean, we're trusting Him with our life. Mm-hmm. So why can't we trust the rest of these scriptures? Right. Hmm? Romans 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For the kingdom of God. Who is the kingdom of God? We're not talking about the kingdom in heaven. This is right here, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. We're talking about Jesus here. Jesus. That's In Matthew 3.2 uh, it says, And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was talking about Jesus here. Jesus is at hand. He's here. That's what the verse was saying. Matthew 12.28 This is Jesus. If but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come upon you. Hmm. Onto you. Amen? So Jesus is our kingdom. Right here is saying the kingdom is better than meat and drink. These words are better than food that you eat. Amen. That's what he's saying right here. The kingdom of God is, is not meat and drink. It's righteousness. Amen. This is what we need. Amen? Amen. Food for your physical health, well, you, we need it. But our, our main source of, of health is right here, the Word of God. Yep. This is where we get it. Luke seventeen twenty one. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. <laughs> Amen? Amen? The kingdom of God is in you. This is what you call walking in the Spirit. This is when you have the kingdom of God and, and you're, like I said last time, when you let your light shine, you let the Holy Spirit come in out of you, this is walking in the Spirit. This is when you're going to be walking in full of joy and happiness. Being a Christian, ooh, man, we, there's things like if you lose a, a family or, or a friend, if you lose someone, we're going to mourn, you know. And that's that's okay. But, that's just temporary. Yeah. You know, you mourn for your friend or your friend, whoever died, you mourn for them. And, but you don't stay in that mourning. Just like with me and my little girl. You know, I could have just stayed in mourning because I lost my little angel. I could have stayed that way. But, but God didn't let me. Amen. God didn't let me because God, God showed me. He said, hey, 
as long as you're mourning, I can't use you. Right. So I, when God said, okay, it's time, I knew it was time. My mourning was over with. I had to get back where He could use me. Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen? James 1-2 My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Joy is not the way we react <clears throat> when we're in the flesh. If we have trials, uh, temptations come on us, are we going to react in joy in the flesh? No. No. The only way you can react with joy is by the Spirit. Right. When the Spirit responds, it's going to respond with all joy. Okay. Like tonight. Y'all don't know this, but tonight, I'm feeling down. But I went in there and I prayed real quick. I said, Lord, put Jesse aside. My body and all, you know, just put that aside. Let the Spirit work in me tonight. Because Jesse's not feeling good. But the Spirit is always feeling good. Amen. The Spirit is always well. Amen? Amen? So you put self aside. You let the Spirit take over. Amen? Amen? And that's what I prayed for over there. Lord, just take this body over. Let them hear your words. Amen. Christians who willingly go through these tribulations and endure uh, these trials and and tribulations we go through, we're not complaining about them. We're going to find through the Scriptures we don't complain about it because the Lord is with us. He is with us. We trust in the Lord to see us through it. And like I said, tonight we're going to see several Scriptures like that. So we don't... when When we go through a trial tribulation, we don't start complaining. Just like Job... Job never cursed God. He didn't do that. But he did complain. We as Christians, and I'm going to show you more scriptures later on why we shouldn't complain. You know, let's let's look at Joseph. The twelve sons. You know, his brothers. What they did to him was evil. Was evil. And Joseph didn't. Joseph didn't know what was going on, okay? He didn't have the whole picture like we got. But what his brothers did to him was evil was wicked. But what did what did God do with that? He made him a king. He made him right under the king. Yeah. Right under the king. Yeah. That's what kind of authority he had. Took over his household. So so Joseph could have been oh me, oh me and just stayed that way. But he knew he knew the Lord had something for him. He didn't know what. He didn't know what. But God knew. God knew. So when we're, whatever we're in that's bringing us down, something's happening to us, just like Job, there might be a reason for it. God might be using that. Not to bring you down, but the end of it, you're going to see victory. And once you see the victory, you're going to go, that was nothing. Amen? Amen. In Romans 8, 28, 8.28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. That's us. Mm-hmm. His purpose for us is to walk with Him in victory. He's given us gifts. He's given us uh, ministries to do. And that's His purpose. But His main purpose for us is to live in victory with Him. That's what he wants. We're his children. Yeah. We're his children. He doesn't want to see us down and out and sad. Right. He wants us to be. A, he wants us to live a victorious life. A victorious life. And he's given us what to do it. Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, all those what five weeks. Those five weeks fit right on in with this. If you take those five weeks we just taught on the Holy Spirit. And, and put it in here. Temptations. Trials. Tribulations. I got the power of God in me. Amen. That's what we learned in the teaching, right? Mm-hmm. So we should already be there, really. Right. I'm just kind of reinforcing you with these scriptures. Amen? Amen? Let me show you an example of having joy during tough times. It's speaking about Paul and Silas here. In Acts 16, verses 22 through 25. And the multitude rose up together against them, 
and the magistrates, meaning the leaders of offices, rent off their clothes and commanded, and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Which that meant uh, not to let them escape. That's what that means. Verse 24, Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So those, these jailers, they, they were told not to let them escape. So what they do, they put them in stocks in the prison so they won't so they wouldn't get away. And at midnight Paul and Silas. Now this is this is two brothers in prison in prison. Picture yourself. You've been thrown in prison. At midnight Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And there's more to it, but these guys were put in prison. And what did they do? Sing Praises they God. prayed and sang songs to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Come on, do you see it? Yeah. These two brothers, they're, they're men just like us. They were men just like us. Was thrown in jail. And what did they do while they were in jail? Praised God. Amen? Amen. We, we got to learn how to live this way. Right. No matter what we go through, no matter what the Lord allows us to go through, we need to learn. As long as you're walking with the Lord. Now, if you did something bad then you deserve whatever it is you got. But if you're being punished for something that is righteous, like preaching the Word of God, and you get put in prison, praise God. Praise God in prison. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's look at Jesus. In Hebrews 12, verses 2 and 4. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus went through that suffering. And I've told you all many times before, but I'm going to say it again. The suffering He went through while He was here on the cross. He had to walk through 70 Roman soldiers. 70 Roman soldiers. And every soldier, Roman soldier had to be a big man because they had to control rights. So you had to be a big man to be a, a Roman soldier. The Bible says 70 men hit Him in His face with their fists. Most of us, that would have killed us. But it didn't kill Jesus. It says he didn't even look like a man. You get 70 fists in your, in your face, you're not going to... Mm-hmm. You don't even look like you have a face. And then they whipped them with 39 lashes. And those that whip they had had sharp objects on them. And it wasn't when they hit, it was when the, the whip would wrap around them. And when it would wrap around him, then they would pull it. And it would just tear the flesh off his back. Now this is what Jesus did. This, is what he, this was his trials. This is what he did. But you know where his eyes were? On the cross. His eyes was looking ahead. I am, I am going to be victorious. Amen. I am. And we can say exactly the same thing. No matter what we go through down here, no matter what, at the end, because this Lord done showed us the end. We already know the end. We're victorious. We're going to be saints and living with, with God, Jesus. We're going to be in heaven. Amen. We already know the end. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Jesus was able to endure the undeserving, undeserving suffering that He went through. His agony. He went through it all. And he didn't do no wrong. He didn't do no wrong. And that's what he had to go through. So what little, what little suffering we have to go through, look what Jesus went through. Yeah. So our little suffering that we have, our little, and I'm saying little, because none of us could go through this. Mm-hmm. So what little suffering we go through, can we do it? Yeah. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Yes, we can if we look don't look with these eyes. Look with your spiritual eyes like Jesus did. He knew what was up ahead. He knew He was going to come out victorious. So He went through what He had to go through. So when you're going through trials and tribulations, think about it. But look at what my Jesus did. Look what He went through. 
He's wanting me just to go through this, whatever it is. It's going to be nothing compared to what Jesus went through. Amen? Amen. And when He went through it, He wasn't God. He was a man. He was 100% man when He went through this. So don't think, well, He was God. No. When He was here on earth, He became flesh. He became a man. So just like that would hurt us and just would probably kill us, He felt the same thing. And He lived through it. But He went through it. Because remember, the Bible says at any time, at any time through all that suffering He was going through, He could have called down a legion of angels to come and take Him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Are we learning? Yeah. Are we learning? Are we starting to look, we're starting to look at our little trials and tribulations we're going through? Right. We're starting to look at them as, man, I'm ashamed. Yeah. I thought that was something. As you're talking, it's just all, yeah. you know. I thought that was something, but look what my, <laughs> well, look what my Jesus did. Yeah. As a man, 100% man. Just remember, Jesus endured more, more than we'll ever endure. That's our God. That's our, that's our Savior. Amen. And then verse 4 says, ye have, not, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Well, I was saying right here, have you had to give your blood to fight against sin? No. Mm. We haven't had to do that. Amen? Amen. But if we did, if we had to give our life and fight, fight against sin, meaning, you know, if, if they come into my house and say, no more Bible study, no more saying the name of Jesus, well, you might as well go ahead and arrest me. Because right. mm-hmm. I, pro- I will always proclaim my Lord. Amen. Always. And if it causes me in my life, then so be it. Because I know what's on the other side. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. You're sending me to my Lord. <laughs> you do this early. <laughs> now, Romans chapter 8, verse 17 through 18. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. You know, just like I just read. Just like he suffered, but now he's in glory. Same thing with us. It's not going to be near the suffering that he did, but we'll suffer, but we're going to be in glory just like he is. Amen. And in verse 18, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time, listen to this, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed into us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Make sure you're receiving what God is telling us tonight. Amen. Amen. 1 John 4.4 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he is in, that is in the world. I say that every day. That verse, every day. <laughs> I, used to remind, I used to say it every day too. <laughs> But then I came up with some others. But this one, for a long time, I still this one. Right? <laughs> for a long time, I used to. I I I would have to. Yeah. During the day, I'd have to remind myself, "Hey, greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world." Amen. Amen. And we know who's in the world, right? Yep. The demons, the devil, and the demons. First John five thirteen. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So if you have commitment and put your trust in the Lord, if you've done if you've given your heart to the Lord, God is telling you right here, hey, it's nothing that you're hoping for. You hope this happens. God is telling us right here that you may know that you have eternal life. We can know it. Know it. Just like I know my name, I can know I'm going to heaven. That's how, that's, it's the same thing. I'm going, I know I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be one of these, well, I hope, you know, I hope I go. No. Yeah. God right here, this is, I mean, this is, God is telling us, hey, you can know, I'm telling you right now, you can know that you're going to be with me eternally in heaven. God is telling us that right now. 1 John 5.18 We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. 
Meaning, don't, what that means, we're not, we don't sin purposely. Okay, that's what that's talking about. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. Meaning, that means God, he is our security. He's the one who holds us. And that the wicked one touches him not. The wicked one cannot touch. Remember what I said? The devil or the demons can tempt you. He can tempt you. But he can't make you. We gotta, we gotta put that in our hearts. Because if you do it, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, like I always do. But if you do it, guess what? It's because you're allowing the devil or the demons to control your life. That's what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. So when temptation comes on you, and you do it, it wasn't because you had to. It wasn't because you didn't have the power to turn away from it if you're a born-again Christian. You chose to do it. And if you chose to do it, who are you listening to? That's the only way to look at it. So remember, the next time you come across... I'm not saying we're never going to sin. We're going to sin. But when you're... Purposely. When you... uh, You know you're about to do it. Yeah. Yeah. If you have to stop and think, is this yeah. the right or wrong yeah. thing to do? <laughs> yeah. If I keep looking at that girl, my thoughts are going to start running. Right. So turn. Turn. Because who has put that girl in front of us? The men. The devil. The devil's put her there to bring us down. We choose. It's our choice if we keep looking and then we have lust. Right. And then it's our choice if we say, okay, I'm not going to allow that lust to come in me. I'm turning. So we have the choice. We have the choice. You keep looking, you're pleasing the devil. Jude 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Did y'all hear that? Now unto him, which is, who is him? Jesus. Is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Like I said, the verse first I used was what? God made us for His glory. That your Father is proud of you. You're Really, seriously, God is proud of us. When we're living for Him, it's very pleasing to His eyes. Very pleasing. When we're living for Him. When we're believing the Scriptures and accepting them for what they say. And to understand this verse, let's see how Jesus said it in John 6, verses 37 through 40. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Who's coming to him? We are. And he's saying, when we will, will not be cast out. Amen? Amen. Verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. Amen? Amen. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which He hath given me I should lose nothing, but should rise it up again at the last days. And this is the will of Him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on Him may have everlasting life. And I will raise them up in the last days. Many times the Lord promises this everlasting life. There are several scriptures that show that we have the promise of the Father that we're going to live forever with Him. Everybody's going to live forever. Everybody. It depends on where you want to live at. (laughs) Depends, yeah. And the Bible says there's going to be a whole lot living in hell. And very few in heaven. You know, we really, until we get to heaven, we really don't know what life is. We, like like I read before, we just see through a glass dimly. Yeah, darkly. You know, we're we're like, we think this is great. Well, what we're reading tonight, what we learned the last time, well, these are teachings that ought to bring us out, you know, where we can go out in the world. But we don't have to hide our Christianity. Right. Christians who go out there and hide it because they want to be accepted by the world. Well, where's the world going? 
the world is going to destruction, to hell. And that's the, please, that's the people we want to please? That's the people we want to be accepted by? Think about it. That's what happens. When you go out there and you're not letting your light shine, you're wanting to please the people who live in darkness. You want to be accepted by the people who live, who don't live for the Lord. Who don't, who have rejected your Lord. That's who you want to be accepted by? Think about it. People who are against your God. Because if they're not for Him, they're against Him. Now, the Lord appeared to Abraham in a vision. And He said to him after returning from battle. Genesis 15, 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. And this is what God told Abram, which is Abraham. God told, Fear not, Abram. Now get this. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Amen. Huh? We should have brought this ceiling down. We should have brought this. God just said, I am your shield. He is our shield. Is anything going to break through that shield? His shield? Is anything going to break through it? Yeah. Mm-mm. And when we allow Him to do that, what's our reward? He is. And I, ex- I am your exceeding. He said, I am your great reward. God is saying that to us. Because you live for me, and you're letting me be your shield, you're going to have me. The Almighty God. That's what this verse is saying. Did I tell you we're going to have good verses tonight? Amen? These are great verses that are in the Bible that we need to read. We need to read and believe them. 1 Corinthians 10.13 There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation shall also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. When Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Right? Did God put him in that place thinking, oh, I don't know if my son's going to be able to handle that. No. No. God knew Jesus was going to be able to handle it and that's why he had Jesus go. He was led by the Spirit. Yeah. He was led by the Spirit to go out there in the wilderness and to be tempted to show the devil, my son, 100% man, will not bow down to you. Amen. He didn't do it just to see if Jesus was, was, was able to do it. God knew it. Jesus was able to do it. Right. Okay? He did it so Satan could see, that's my son. He is not going to worship you. I'm going to let you do, give him this. I'm going to let, I'm going to allow you to give him these temptations so you can see my son will not worship you. Amen. Amen. To Job, same thing with Job. God allowed the devil to take everything away from Job because the devil said, if you, Job only worships you and praises you because all the things you give him. Because Job was a very wealthy man. And Satan said, only because you, you do all this for him, he praises you. If you was to take all that away from him, he would curse you. God told Satan, go ahead, take everything away from him. See if he curses me. Did he? No. He complained, like I said. Right. He complained, but he didn't curse his God. Amen? Mm-hmm. Now let's make sure we don't do what James 1.13 says. Let no man say when he is tempted... I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Now, God is not the one who tempted Jesus. Alright, remember, okay? He put Jesus there to be tempted by the devil to prove a point that Jesus would not worship him. He did the same thing with Job. God did not tempt Job. He allowed the devil to do what he wanted to do just to prove to the devil that Job wouldn't do what, this, what Satan said he would do. Right. So God did not do the tempting. Okay, God does not tempt us. Our response to tests or temptations shows in our faithfulness to God. Yeah. Or it shows in unfaithfulness. We're going to respond one of those two ways. Yeah. We're either going to be faithful to Him 
or we're going to be unfaithful to them. If it's unfaithfulness, unfaithfulness that we show, not only we're we going to be unfaithful, but un- that unfaithful is going to is going to lead to bitterness. That's what it will lead to. What God, you know, God, and with an angry, being angry at God because of whatever happened. So that unfaithfulness is going to end up to be bitter. You're going to be resentful toward God. You're going to be angry toward God. That's what happens. What What did I say before? A little leaven leavens the whole what, the whole bread. Let a little bit of sin come in. See what happens. Remember what it says in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew sixteen thirteen, and lead us not into into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When it says deliver us from evil, what he's saying right here is referring to David. The, uh, referring to Satan, and he has delivered us from Satan. Yeah. Remember, if you're lost, if you're a lost person, and you do not have the Holy Spirit living in you, guess what can can, can come in you? Demons yeah. can possess you. It's not like I said. It's not as bad as it used to be in the time of Jesus. But demons can possess. Why do you think they got these people that are called mediums? They do have power, but where are they getting the power from? From yeah. demons. Y'all understand? Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you do not have the Holy Spirit living in you, yes, a demon can possess you and give you power like you, these show, they got a movie called Mediums. Yeah. If it's still out, I don't know, but that's for real. Demons are for real. What does Ephesians say? We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the spirit world. Right. So believe me, there's demons out there. And we need to stay strong in the Lord. Strong in the Lord. They can't possess you because they can't live where Jesus is at. Right, amen. They can tempt us from out here, but they cannot possess you. Amen? amen? We don't have to worry about that. And like I said before, the devil, you cannot claim the devil made me do it. Right. You can't, we as Christians can't, can't say that. Like I said before, if we do it, it's because we did it willingly, not because the devil made us do it. We escape temptation not by getting out of it, the Lord doesn't take us around temptation. He takes us through it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why? Why does He take us through it? Because we got the, His power. Amen. He does a fighting. We just walk through it. Right. Amen? I understand. <laughs> if, if, if when we leave this house tonight, if my neighbors don't come to me tomorrow and say, why do all those people come out of your house drunk? <laughs> oh yeah, they were drunk, all right. They were drunk in the spirit. <laughs> One of the ways to help us from temptation is to do what it says in Mark 14.38. This is what we do. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. So if we're in the flesh, we're going to be weak towards temptations. But the spirit is always ready. Right. Amen. Amen. So what do we do? We watch. We watch and pray. Pray. Just like it says in the, in the, man, in the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not to temptation. Not the Lord is not leading us in temptation. The devil is. Hebrews 13.5 Let your conversation be without covetedness. And what that means, don't, don't be obsessed with getting more material things. A lot of people live that way. A lot of people live that way. He says, and be content with such things ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave you, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So much better than possessions. Amen. 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 (laughs) For most people, they want more money. Most people, even Christians, even Christians are the same way. Money is very important to them. Having material things is very important to them. In the Living Bible, I'm going to read 1 Timothy out of the Living Bible because I like the way it says it here. Charge them that are rich in this world, rich in this world, that they be not high-minded nor trust in, in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Whatever the Lord has given us, whatever you have, that's what the Lord has given us to enjoy. Be content, he says. Be content with what you have. 
If you're out there trying to keep get more, or you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, that is sin. That is sin. I mean, Jody and I, look, we're not trying to be rich so we can live in a four-story house and have a five-door garage out there. We're not living for that. We're content with what we have. Right, Jody? Right. We're content with what? This is what the Lord's given us. Right. All right? Do not be like the world. Do not go out there, well, if he got one, then I'm going to get one. Right. Well, if they have this, then I need to get it. Greed. That is that is of the world. Our riches is from the Lord. Amen. Luke twelve fifteen. Then he said, "Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own." Amen. Because can can that take a lot of stress away? It can. Really, it seriously. Can. That can take a lot of... Because if, if you are a person who's trying to keep up with the Joneses, now you can see, hey, I don't need to do that. That's just right. greed. I don't need to do that. Why am I doing that? And that relieves a lot of stress. Yeah. It really does. If you believe it, if you believe this, I'm going to read it again. Then he said, beware. Beware. He told us, be careful. Because he already knows us, right? Yeah. He knows us. <laughs> He's saying, be careful. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. You know, probably more than... It's, I don't even know what number to use. But you know how many people are out there who think they're successful successful because they have a lot? Yeah. A lot of people like that. Well, look at all what I have. Yeah. And that to them, that's being rich. That's being successful. Us being rich is living for the Lord. Is living for the Lord. And because I only have this, well, I don't look at it that way. Well, I only have this. I don't look at it that way. This is what my God has given me. Yeah. I am going to be very content with it. Yeah. If this is what He gives me, this is what I'm happy with. Amen. Amen. 1 Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And that is so true. Mm-hmm. And some people craving money have wandered from the truth, true faith, and pierced themselves with many sorrows. When you live that way, you're going to have sorrows in your life. If you're a rich man, guess what? You're not happy. You're not happy because most of your friends are with you because you have money, not because of you. And then you got to worry about how many of your friends are trying to take your money. How's that happiness? How can that be a happy life when that's all you worry about? And believe me, they do. It brings nothing but sorrow. The love of money is the root of all kind of evil. Jacob says to the Lord in Genesis 32.10, Jacob says, I am not worthy of the least of all your mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and that staff means his walking stick, and now I am become two bands, which means he has two, two camps filled of his household. There's two, his house, his family is so big, there's two camps of it. He said, he says, I am not worthy of your mercies, Lord. I'm not worthy of your mercies. Should we feel that way? Yeah. We should feel exactly the same thing. Lord, I am not worthy of your mercies. Yeah. I am not. And of your truth. All he started was, all he started, it says, all he had was his walking stick. But because he started living for the Lord, now he's got two camps where he had, that's his family. Amen? Amen. Same thing with Job. When Job had, had, I mean, he was very wealthy. But then the Satan took it all away, and at the end, what happened? The Lord blessed him, and he had more than he had before. Think you need to do Job again. <laughs> Job was a good book. <laughs> Are y'all getting this? Oh yeah. If you don't see how great and how wonderful our Lord is after the night, check yourself. Then you must not have the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit, believe me, will receive all this with gladness and joy. Mm-hmm. Oh, Amen. that's my Father. That's my Father. <laughs> you know, 
Even though it's the Holy Spirit, well, that's the Holy Spirit. Well, yeah, that's the Father too. Right. You know, we we got we believe in the Trinity, yeah. all three of them are one. But Jesus was God, but became flesh when He came on Earth. He was truly flesh, a hundred percent man, but He was God. Don't ask me how that works. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll know. But right now, He was all three of them. He was God in heaven. At the same time, He was Son of God. At the same time, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. This is what our God can do. Amen. Amen. The best way I've, I've seen that described, and it's a pretty good description, is just like water, steam, and ice. They're all three the same. Water, steam, and ice. But they're three different elements. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Keep going. Hey man, go, bro. go, brother Jesse. Go, <laughs> baby, So, if you want to be happy, truly be happy, be content with what you have. Yeah. Be content with it. And then he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. What he's saying, I will always be there for what you need. I will always be there for what you need. That's what he's saying right here. This is for material things and spiritual things. It's for both of them. Just like the Lord said in Matthew. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. I got it. I know what you need. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's saying right here again. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I got you. Don't worry about it. That's what he's saying. Amen? Hallelujah. We don't have to wake up one morning and wonder, is Jesus going to be with me today? <laughs> we don't have to do that. He's going to be there every morning when we wake up. Amen. Even after, we, even after we die, which I don't know if we sleep in heaven, but He'll always be there. Maybe From now on, for the rest of your life, here and there, Jesus is always going to be there. Always. Amen. So get used to Him. Ephesians 2.5 Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved. Amen. Now, this verse, God is saying, we were dead. We were dead in sin. Dead. Y'all know what the word dead means? We had no life. Or we thought we had life. We were breathing. But we were dead. And God has made us alive. He has made us alive through Jesus Christ. Amen. And not because of how good we are. He says, by grace. By God's grace are we saved. Not by goodness. Not by how good you are. Because I've said it before. Our goodness to God is as filthy rags. Yeah. So, if there's anybody out there who thinks your goodness is going to get you to heaven, uh, read this verse. Yeah. By grace are you saved. This is what you call freedom from death. Yeah. We don't have it. The Lord has already defeated death for us. Jesus defeated death for us so we would not have to experience death. And I'm going to get more on that in just a minute. John 8.32 And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, I know we've heard this. We've had to have heard this more than just once. But did you really receive it? The truth shall make you free. Are we under bondage of Satan anymore? Mm -hmm. We're not. We're set free from his bondage. From his ruling of the, of the world. We're no longer under that. We have been set free. God said, we have been set free. Amen. The truth. This Bible is the truth. And this is the only truth. Yeah. The only truth. There is no other truth beside this Bible. Amen? Amen? And the Lord has given us this truth. The Lord has given us this truth. Given us this who truth. We? Yeah, who are we? <laughs> really, seriously, who are we? He made us from dirt. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Matthews chapter 11, verse eight through 28 through 30. Je then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I mean, there's more, but I can stop right there and we can just say, Glory, hallelujah, Glory. amen. amen. <laughs> verse 29. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We can find rest for our souls. Our souls don't have to be 
under burdens and wearying. Verse 30, For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden I give you is light. Now yoke, yoke means work. It, the word yoke, you know, they have that big log, and they've got a pole in the middle, and you got a, a cow or whatever on this end, and on this end they would make it turn. Well, that's a yoke. That's working. Them cows are working. But, the, but right here it says, My yoke, my work, my ministry is easy. That's what he said. Right? For my yoke, my ministry for you is easy to bear. And the burden I give you is light. <laughs> this is from God. Right. Whatever burden you have, it's light. God said it's light. You might think it's heavy, but you know why you think it's heavy? Because you're in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But the Lord said it's light. He said, it's light. You walk with me, it's light. Your burden is light if you're walking with me. Amen? Amen. Verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Who's him? That's us. He will keep us in perfect peace. Perfect means, perfect peace means, are you going to worry about this? No. Are you going to be stressed out about that? No. He says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. If our mind stays on the Lord, because we trust him. And that's, I gave you this verse before, Psalms 1 2. This is how you, you keep your mind on him. It says in Psalms 1 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's how our mind is stayed on the Lord. We meditate on Him day and night. Amen? Amen. If you meditate on Him on day and night, do you think you're going to be walking in the Spirit? Mm-hmm. I mean, when you got only Jesus on your mind, Amen? Amen? And then verse 4, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Everlasting strength. Amen. What strength you have right now, you're going to have it no matter how old you are. If you live to be a hundred, you're still going to have the strength of the Lord. You might be weak. Your body might be weak and old. But you're still going to have the strength of God. Only the bodies get weak. But our spirit stays strong always. Amen? Amen. Second, Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of sound mind. Again, of sound mind. Is a sound mind worrying? Yeah. Lord said He has given us power of love and of a sound mind. He said, I wish I would have known this before because then I wouldn't have all this gray hair. <laughs> Jeremiah thirty two twenty seven. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Nope. We have a God that there's nothing He can't handle. Nothing. I don't care what problem you bring to the Lord, He can control it. Take care of it. Amen? Mm-hmm. I mean, how does that make you feel? No, no matter what, you can take it to the Lord and He'll take care of it. That's awesome. That's, you can have peace. You can have rest in that. Also in Josh 1, nine, have I not Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. What did he say? Have not I commanded. The Lord is commanding us. Hey, be of good courage. Be strong. This is a command from the Lord. He's saying be not afraid. God is commanding us not to be afraid. Amen? Amen. Christians will use the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome whatever comes in their life. And you already know the power, you already know about the power of the Holy Spirit. You already got that. So now all these verses that I'm reading to y'all, it's for you. Because you got the power to go and accept these verses. You can go out there and be strong in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can go out there with good courage with the power of the Holy Spirit. And because you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you will not be afraid. 
Why are we living defeated lives? Why? Because we're not eating the words of God. We are. We are right now. God is revealing to us. So after tonight, there is no reason for us to go out there and be afraid. Amen? Amen. God. Because God will be there. He will overcome whatever it is He needs to overcome for you. Psalms 34, verses 17 and 19. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and deliver them out of their troubles. The righteous. Who's that? That's us. We cry, and the Lord hears us, and delivers them out of, delivers the trouble out. Verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto thee that are, are broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. When it says right here, when we pray to the Lord, He hears our prayer. I keep repeating a lot of it. It's the same thing. Because repetition is not bad. Sometimes we didn't get it the first time. Sometimes we might not get it the second time. But if you keep hearing it, sooner or later you're going to receive it. Alright? He will deliver us out of all of our afflictions. That's good to know. We have many trials that come our way and He will see us through them. Psalms 49.15 But God will redeem our... But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave for He shall receive me. God will redeem our soul from the power of the grave. Do we have to fear the grave? Do we have to fear death? That's what it's saying right here. I mean, tonight, we all look at death in a different way. I mean, I'm, I'll tell you right now, I'm scared to stop breathing. You know, I, I don't know too many people who are like, oh, it don't scare me to stop breathing. Oh, I'm, well, it's going to scare me to stop breathing, but, it's not gonna, but I'm not going to be scared to die because I'm not dying. And I got a verse that I'm getting ready to show. 2 Corinthians 5.1 for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Earthly house means our physical bodies. But we know that one day, this, this body, this body, because this is just a shell. Alright? Just a shell. But our soul and our spirit are not going to die. Our earthly bodies, this shell, will, but our soul and our spirit will not. Amen. It says, a house not made with hands. There's going to be a house not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. That's where we're going. To a house not made with hands. So if they weren't made with the hands of men, who were they made by? God, God made this house for us. Amen. John 14, verse 2 and 3 in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. God is telling us He's going to prepare a place for us. God is saying that. And if I go and prepare a place for you, if, now if I go and I prepare this place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. There where I am, there ye may be also. I mean, I could stop right there and just, we should just really? fall on our knees. God is building a mansion. He said mansion. We, we think of a mansion, these mansions down here. But what do you think a mansion is to God? <laughs> huh? And he said, he, said, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. A mansion. And if I tell you this, then I mean it. I'm coming back for you. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't want anybody. I don't want anybody committing suicide. Okay, <laughs> okay, don't do that. I know this is great and everything, but don't go commit suicide. And say, oh, I want that mansion. He says there's many mansions in this. So he's going to take care of everyone that goes. When we're living for the Lord, he says there's a place in heaven, a mansion in heaven waiting on us. And this happens. The minute, the second we stop breathing, this happens. We leave these earthly bodies 
and we're with, we're with Him. Because in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, it says, We are confident, I say, and, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. As soon as we stop breathing, we leave these bodies. I mean, the second we stop breathing, we'll be in present with the Lord. <laughs> Again, I'm going to say, please do not go commit suicide tonight. <laughs> All right? But think about it. As soon as this body dies, as soon as we start breathing, we're going to be with God Almighty. I mean, the second we start breathing, we're in heaven with God. So should we fear death? Mm-hmm. If anything, is like, kill me, all care. <laughs> you know? I mean, are these good scriptures? Oh, yeah. Are these good scriptures? I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. Because I'm going to be thinking of all these glorious... Yeah, I was thinking earlier. Yeah. <laughs> now, Romans ten seventeen. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You just heard the words of the Lord. Now, do you have faith to believe all the things we just read? Yeah. Do you have faith in that? Your life, your listen to me, your life is going to show if you have faith in it. It will. I'm telling you right now. Your life will show if you believe all the verses we just read. Because there's no way you can live a victorious life and let your light shine without accepting these verses in your heart. You will be the judge of yourself. Am I going to show that I believe these things? When I go out there in the world, among the wicked, among the lost, am I going to go out there and show that I believe all this? Because if you do believe it, you will be living in joy and happiness, no matter what. People are going to think you're crazy. People think that already. <laughs> Luke one thirty seven. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Yeah. I mean, we've been we've been reading that, but right here, he plainly says it. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Second Corinthians five seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Please have that one down, because if you're looking with these eyes, you're gonna get defeated. You're gonna be defeated if you look with your earthly eyes. Right. It says, "For we walk by faith. Faith in what?" Faith in the words we just heard. We have faith in, in these words. That these are words are true. That these are the eternal truths of God. These words that we read. That's what our faith is in. Not by what we see with these eyes. Because these eyes, you will, you will live a defeated life if you're looking through life with these eyes. Second right. Corinthians 5.17 And if you live this way, all the verses I just gave you, if you live this way, 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Tomorrow, when you walk, wake up in the morning, if we have it tomorrow, you're going to be a new creature. Why? Because you're accepting and receiving all the verses we've read tonight. And if you have... Listen to me. If you have really received them in your heart, you will go out there tomorrow with joy, happiness, knowing nothing can defeat you. Nothing. Amen. That's our God. That's what He's done for us. <laughs> Amen. We, I mean, we have a King that nobody can beat Him. Nobody. Mm-hmm. And so we it's belong to Him. Like we're, you know, we're invincible. <laughs> You're right. We are. We are in this world. We are. Yeah. The devil can't touch us. He cannot touch us unless we just let him. Yeah. The devil cannot touch you. Amen? Amen. That's some good news right there by itself. Right. Psalms 134 2. Lift up your hands in the, sanct- in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. If you live by this, if you live and receive these scriptures, you will lift your hands to the Lord. Whether it be in church, home by yourself, you will lift your hands to the Lord and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. When you're praying, you're going to lift your hands to the Lord. Right here it says it. But right here it says in church, lift your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Now I used to have a problem with that a long time ago. I don't have a problem with it now. But when you really love the Lord and you receive these, you want to stand up and lift your hands to the Lord because you believe everything that's in the Word of God. When you believe everything that's in here, you are going to stand up and praise God. You will. You can't help it. Because the Spirit in you wants to do it. I've already taught y'all that. The Spirit in you wants to do it. And the Bible says, the Lord says, do not quench the Spirit. 
So if you're sitting there and you want to say hallelujah or you want to stand up and raise your hands to the Lord and praise and you're not, you're sinning. Because the Lord says, do not quench the Spirit. Right? First right. Kings 8.22 And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, in front of all of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And all of Israel, Solomon, was praising God with his hands lifted. And he did it in front of all of Israel. We have a hard time doing it in just a few people in church. You hear me? Nehemiah 8.6 And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their face toward the ground. Should we, should we, after hearing these verses tonight, should we praise and worship our Lord? Yes, yes, and yes. In fact, that should even be enough. For everything He's promised us in these verses that we read tonight, right. praising and worshiping the Lord, that's the least we can do. Mm-hmm. That's the least we can do. What He wants to see, that's going to please Him, but it what He wants you to see, He wants to see His children walk in a victorious life. That's what He wants to see. Because that will be pleasing to His eyes. Psalm 63, 4. Thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thine hand. So while we're living, while we're here on earth, it says, I will lift up my hands. Because when we get to heaven, everybody's going to be lifting their hands. Everybody. There's not going to be no shyness, no, no looking around, no, you know, I don't want them to see me. No. Everybody will praise the Lord. So while we're here, He's saying, well, do it while you're here. Do it while you're here. Raise your hands to me. Praise me. Do it while you're here. Hearing all these verses tonight, these scriptures, is this going to change you? Yes or no? You don't have to say yes or no. But I mean, really, is it going to change you? It's got to change you. It has to change you. It has to. If you got the Holy Spirit in you, you will become a new creature. No ifs, ands, or buts. You will become a new creature. Because how can you not show joy and happiness I mean, if, if you believe this, you have to show it. If you believe it, you have to show it. Just, it. It just has to come out. It has to. But if you're not that new creature, it's not going to show. Right. But if you live by these verses, then you've become that new creature. Old things have passed away. Amen.